Hello, welcome to the second video in this series of retool tutorials for the essentials of what you have to know to build an app. Let's dive in. Okay, so I made a couple of additions for the purposes of this video. I added one, one query for leagues and I actually subscribed to the 14 day trial to be able to do this. So now I have all of the European leagues here and every time i change it the teams for the current season will will appear and i have added some filters or the components for the filters and we will see how to apply those filters to the table <clears throat> so i have a search component for free search position to filter by position nationality and height a range slider you will notice also that i added a couple of columns contract ends i thought that was interesting and the nationality the flag the flag works the same way as with the image but actually i'm going to show you how that was so i added a column and because i i added a new query with all of the countries you can see here data for each country it has a lot of information including the flag so basically in my information about each player each player will have a nationality id here so what this column is doing is basically mapping the value searching within countries data data for item nationality id and then returning the image pad so you get actually that there. so remember in the previous video we removed the captain column and we added the row we filled it in blue so that we could identify who the captain was i want to show you something else that you can do so if i go to the column name i can add a caption and i will put a conditional so if current source row captain is equal to true sorry then captain otherwise nothing so you can see here it added a captain here below the name and below everyone else, nothing. So that's another way of actually adding a flag or, or, or show that someone has either a title or an email or something like that. And also something that I did, if you go to interaction of your table settings, you can default sort by a column so that whenever the page loads, the table will actually default like that. Now, just a word of warning, for you to be able to make a default sort, your row needs to be available. Whether that's hidden or not, it needs to be here. If it's deleted, then you won't be able to actually do that. Okay, now let's go to the filters. The table has um, two ways of filtering. It has default filter. Well, I have many ways, but here in the settings, you have default filters. I have also search term. So I'm gonna go first with the search term. So I'm gonna select my text input one dot value. Here you have fuzzy or case sensitive or case sensitive. So if I left fuzzy match, if I write, you can see automatically it, it finds tall or so because it's fuzzy. If I write smid si, it's not showing because if not, it's not a multi-select, but you can see that it will find all of the things that you're searching so that is one easy way of applying a filter which is a search now for position and nationality position again what i will do is map the options you can either write the options manually or map i'm going to map them to my position square you can see automatically ready to add the id and name so if i select options i can see already all of my positions here now if I go here to the table, I will go to my default filters, the position. Now, position, let's remember that we have we have it as a text. So we are actually mapping the value, so it's no longer the ID. Here in position, if we actually see our information about this, we have ID and the, the name. So it could actually be better if we just write name as well here. So we don't have the ID, just have name and name. So we're going to filter it by the value as well. You could, you could actually filter it by the label if you wanted. 
So if I go back here, position is equal to select to value. So you will see right now it's no, but if I change it to midfielder, it will filter through all of the midfielders here automatically. Now, as I was saying, this is the value. Right now, the value is midfielder because we changed the value, but it could have been an integer. Even though you could actually have kept that, kept that, you could have selected, selected the value, selected item, or selected label. You can see that will be the same thing. So you could have left, we could have left the ID as value. Now, nationality. I want to show you, so what I did here, instead of having just, so if I see my country's API call, you will see that I have 244 items. So it didn't make sense to have 244 countries here. So what I did in the data source was just filter the countries based on the nationality of the players of the actual squad right now. Also, let me just remove this. And actually, you will see here that you can uh, show the clear button here. So you click on it, and now I can clear it. So you can see this team has several nationalities in there. And I just want to show this countries because it just doesn't make sense to show all the other ones. So what I'm doing is filtering country by the squad data, which I'm mapping based to nationality ID, which is also nested within my data. And it's including country ID. I usually get help from ChatGPT to write this one. It's not being my I season developer myself. If I explain things to ChatGTP, it really returns them quite easily. So now I have this here, and you will see that my nationality, the data that it includes, it, the ID, the image path, and the name. So that's why I also get the image path in here, and I get really nice countries with their flag. So again, I will go here, and nationality, I actually have an image here. So I won't be able to filter by this column. So what I will do is add another column, which I will hide. This will be from the player. This will be a number, and it will be item nationality ID. So you see now I get this column. So it's nationality ID, and I will hide it, hide column. But now I can actually filter. So if I go to my table and filter, I will put nationality ID, it's equal to select three value. Now, it's very helpful to see that whenever you type in and you hover over the component select, you will see all the information that you can actually refer to. Here, I use value, but you will have also selected item. You will see, for example, down there, a selected item right now is null, selected index, and so on. So if I now filter by England, I will just get all of the English one. And then again, I will show the clear button and filter. There's also a way of actually filtering by multiple, multiple options. So multi options, you can select several countries. I won't do that in this, in this tutorial, but it is certainly doable and I do it often. And then finally the height. So we will apply a filter where height is less or equal to, and again, I will start range slider. So here, if I hover, I can see I have value, end, and start. So I will value, end, currently at 20, 220. And then I will create a new one, and then add height, and it's higher or equal to range slider. Oops, value dot start. So now if I move this here, to, to, well, you can see the goalkeeper is the tallest one. And if I go scroll it down, who is the shortest one, you will see there, Lewis Bryant, 173. Now all of this, all of these filters work together. So if I defender and then United States, oh, there you go. Actually, my nationality is not being updated after the filter. We could do that, but I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial. But so I will then just go into England. 
So there you go. I have all the defenders from England. And I can actually then start looking at the height. So if I just, let's move it to 190. There you go. Whoops, there you go. All right, move this. So this is a way of applying filters to a table. I hope you have enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any other thoughts and comments and questions.